right down here next to your save button, you have a little gear icon. This is the scenario settings. Go ahead and click on that. And what I'm going to introduce you to first is actually the third thing on this list. We're going to skip past the first two items and go to allow storing of incomplete executions. I don't know if you remember, in a previous lesson, I showed you the menus at the top of the screen. And in those menus, I had incomplete executions, but there was nothing there. That's this option right here. The only way you're going to see items start to appear in incomplete executions is if you enable this option. Once we do that, in your main scenario viewer, when you first open your scenario, you'll see incomplete executions listed right here, and this amounts to an error log. We've just enabled it, so now anytime there is something that causes an error or a hiccup in this, we'll see it listed right here under incomplete executions. Now I'm going to back out of the scenario, but I need to remember to save it. And the reason is these settings actually follow your scenario. So everything right here is not a global setting, but this is something that exists within your actual scenario itself. Let me go ahead and open up another scenario. Let's do my Facebook auto poster. And we'll go down to settings. And as you can see, it has a completely different setting stored here. It's important to know that your settings follow your scenarios. So that we can see what this looks like and so you know what to expect, I've broken one of my scenarios deliberately. And let's give it a whirl. Yep. Like clockwork. Now we should see it in incomplete executions. There we go. There's our first entry. I'm going to click on detail right over here. It basically just shows us a snapshot of the failure. We know which module failed. We can click on it and it gives us the error. Up until this point, I have never enabled this setting personally. And the reason is anytime you have a module that fails, you can click right up here and it's going to give you the error information. So for myself personally, working alone and doing what I do with print on demand and automating social media, it really hasn't come up. Where do I think such a, a thing would come up where you would want to enable this option. Well, if you're working with other people or maybe in a development organization where you need to make the data easily available to somebody else, then probably this is what you would want to do. Now I want you to scroll back up to the top option in your settings menu, sequential processing. So let's read and see what it has to say. If you enable this option and the incomplete execution folder contains an incomplete scenario execution, the scenario will be paused until all incomplete executions are resolved. This option also guarantees that all incomplete executions will always be solved in the order in which they occurred. When will this impact your workflow and why would you use it? What they're not saying here is that the opposite of sequential processing is parallel processing. The difference between the two is exactly how it sounds. Sequential, each module is passed sequentially, so each one executes in order. Parallel will allow multiple modules to be running at the same time. You might be thinking to yourself, but Chris, doesn't it always execute in order? Well, for the scenario that I have open and for many that I use personally, if it's just a linear flow passing from module to module, then yes, it's pretty much already sequential. You're probably not going to run across too many examples of parallel processing until you start building bigger, more complex scenarios, web apps, or things like that. I've grabbed an example from online of how complex and bonkers your scenarios can really be. And when you start building things like this, this is where it's possible for different modular branches to process at the same time instead of having to wait for the entire sequence. This both speeds up the process and depending on what you're doing, there might be a function to it. Next option in the menu is data is confidential. The default is no. If you switch this to yes, what it does is it just doesn't save a lot of the data that ends up being passed. 
you would enable this for various security measures or if you work for an enterprise that has certain policies. But in general, it's not recommended because it kind of disables your ability to debug what's going on. Scroll down just a bit further and you'll see enable data loss. The default is no. And I have not run into a, a scenario or a particular way of doing things that required this. It gives a particular scenario though, if you read the little paragraph here, I'll kind of paraphrase it and summarize it. What it's saying is that if make fails to save something to your incomplete executions, and an example of why that might be, you have a data limit in make. So depending on what monthly plan you have, you bump up against a data limit. Hypothetically, if you're an enterprise and you are processing loads and loads of data, or maybe you just have loads and loads of data to process, you could run against your data limit. And then all of a sudden you're in a situation where your scenario won't execute if it's not able to save something into your incomplete executions, enabling this item right here will dump the incomplete execution. It basically just says, oh, well, we're out of space, so we're not going to save it, and you lose the debug data. Next, we have auto commit and commit trigger last. These are a little bit more advanced options that you're probably not gonna mess with until you get into more advanced app building. But to give you an idea of what it means, commit is when you take something out of a memory space and you actually write it. Let's say you are a developer and you're copying databases over your system admin. This allows you to check out the data, make sure everything works and is okay before committing and writing that data. This way you can do things like roll back in the event of something not working. Next, you'll want to scroll down to the very bottom, max number of cycles. The default is set to one. What is a cycle? A cycle is one completion of your entire scenario. So once you hit play and you run through your scenario and it runs through all modules and it's able to complete all of them, you have one cycle. Why would you want to increase your cycle count? Well, kind of like before, you can build very advanced scenarios, and in some of the ways that you may build your scenarios, you might end up wanting to cycle through your scenario more than once, such as if you want to grab different data that's coming out of a specialized module that feeds multiple different types of data. Toggle Show Advanced Settings, and under that we have Number of Consecutive Errors. The default is three. In our last lesson, I showed you the scheduler where we could set our scenarios to run on a regular schedule. What happens if you bump up against an error? Well, after it hits the error three times, it's going to deactivate your scenario and you will log in to make and you will notice that your previously active scenario is now an inactive scenario. It has hit an error three times and so it is no longer going to try to execute this scenario. Earlier on, we changed a couple of the defaults. This right here actually kind of cancels out max number of consecutive errors. If we have these set to the default, which are no, we are not sequentially processing and we are not allowing the storing of incomplete executions, then this kicks in and you will be able to get three errors before it deactivates your scenario. The way we had it set up just a second ago where we had sequential processing and storing of incomplete executions enabled, this is actually going to put on the brakes at the first error. 